Good morning, everybody. I hope that you can see and hear me. Welcome to our Brave Chats webinar on a beautiful Friday morning in Melbourne. I'd love to know that you can hear and see me okay. So if you can pop that in the chat, that would be extremely helpful, um, especially my support team, Nat and Shireen, if you can let me know that all is okay with audio and video, that would be amazing. Thank you. So my name's Karen Williams. I'm a transformational leadership coach and we have a coaching and training company called KW and Co. And we've been doing this work with uh, leaders and managers and people who want to increase their impact and influence and elevate their personal and professional brand. We've been doing this work for 10 years across industry and I've been a coach for about double that time. So this topic today, you as coach, is very exciting for me. I love talking about coaching skills. So I'm looking forward to this conversation. So yes, you can hear me. Thank you so much, Nat. So you as coach is is something that we want to explore and I'm interested in hearing today as to how much coaching you're doing. Are you doing any coaching at all, whether that's as a leader, manager or someone who wants to influence? Maybe you're in your own business and you want to develop your skills or maybe you're wanting to learn about coach-like skills and you haven't tried them out yet. Maybe you've got a team and some of them are working really well and are empowered and productive and hitting the numbers and the targets that they need to and maybe some of your team aren't and you really want to help them and support them to grow. So all different reasons that you might be here today. So let's get into the conversation in a moment. So let me hear where you're from. So I can see a few amazing people. Adam, Alicia, welcome. Welcome, Elisa. Welcome, Jade. Nice to see you. Jessica, Lynette, Meg, me. Thanks, Wayne, for joining. Nice to see you. I was really excited to see you had registered. So I'd like to know where you're from. I'm coming to you from cool-ish Melbourne on a beautiful autumn day. And we're about to, I guess, go into winter. So it's going to test us all, isn't it? So where are you from? Where are you dialing in from? I would love to hear. And as Natalie shared, make sure that you change your settings in chat to hosts and panellists or, or everyone, actually, from hosts and panellists to everyone. That's me, is that? Is that what you're telling me, Nat? <laughs> Probably. And that's for everyone because what I find about these webinars is that we all share such gold nuggets. So you might pick something up today that I share. Fantastic if you do. But there'll be people that ask questions in the chat or you might share something and someone will take that away and think that's amazing. So if you can change your chat settings to everyone, then when you share, everyone can see that your insights and maybe pick up what you're putting down. All right, so today um, our Brave Chats masterclasses and webinars are about helping you learn. So every masterclass, I bring something new. So we use these webinars to help us expand how we teach, how we share, how we coach. I'm always looking for new ways and new frameworks and new ideas to communicate this message. There was a study done recently, um, Stephen Bartlett shared on his Diary of a CEO podcast that 30% of women and 60% of men would rather choose and did choose an electric shock rather than sitting with their thoughts for 15 minutes. Like that's amazing, isn't it? And when we're coaching leaders all day, every day, they'll laugh and they'll say, yep, because sitting with our thoughts, even attempting to stop and pause, like today, like in this hour, you're stopping and pausing and maybe reflecting in new ways, that takes something, doesn't it? It takes courage. It takes making time in your diary, in your busy schedule when everybody's demanding your time and attention. So I encourage you to lap up this time that you're making for yourself today. And thank you so much for being here. I acknowledge you for the courage that it's taken to just get up a bit earlier and dial in. So hopefully you won't choose the electric shock. You'll choose to sit with your thoughts for a few minutes because that's where the wisdom is. I know it's scary, but that's where we learn. So you might be here to learn. You might be here to connect with like-minded people who are doing the work of self-awareness and courageous leadership, whether that's with a title or without a title, doesn't matter. You might be here for some accountability. So you know what you need to do, but you're not doing it. I know that feeling. We all do that. Or you might want to choose to use these tools that I share with you to expand conversations at work. 
or at home. So the tools that we share and the frameworks are all applicable at home in your relationships with your family and friends as well. So you might be looking for some new tips and tricks in how to influence or connect or build trust with anybody around you. And so today, that'll be some of what we talk about as we talk about being coach-like. All right, so let me hear where you're from. Jazz, nice to see you. Woo! I know, it's been kind of in and out, hasn't it, our webinars? We ran our webinars for two years through COVID. Um, monthly, fortnightly, it was a big project and really I loved them the most, I think. Gave me an opportunity to connect with you all. And we, then we had a bit of a break for about eight months because, um, well, we needed a break and we had so much deli client delivery with our corporate clients. And then we tried a few other methods. And so here we are today, me and a laptop. That's all we really need, isn't it? And an iPad. So I'll be drawing some things up for you today. So who is here? Let me see. So Jazz, Alicia, woo, nice to see you. Good morning. Yes, Winter from Melbourne, me woo, thank you. Good morning. Joining from Melbourne, Zoom user, welcome. <laughs> nice to see you. What else? Chat should be working. Oh, so it wasn't working. Interesting. Thank you, Nat. Meg, nice to see you. I'm sure it's a lovely day up there. Jess, lovely to see you. I was just thinking about you the other day, actually. Lynette from Launceston, nice to see you. Jess from Sydney. Jade from Melbourne. Good morning, Elizabeth. You're up nice and early. Nice to see you. I'm looking forward to seeing you later today. Darren, hi. Nice to see you. So some all up and down the East Coast by the looks. Sometimes we have people dialing in. Um, from the other side of the country, or from New Zealand maybe, sometimes internationally. So I welcome everybody, everybody here. Um, welcome to your Friday morning inspiration, I hope. So you as coach, what else do I want to say? Okay, we've got changed our coach settings, our chat settings, that's fine. So you as coach, what does that mean for you? Hopefully you've got your notebook and your pen there and there'll be some reflections as we go through as normal. What is what do you want to get out of today? You might be here thinking about you know your professional life. How do I get more influence and impact? How do I have people listen to me? How do I talk such that people don't then just glaze over and start you know stifling the yawns? I get that sometimes, sometimes when I get very passionate and then I'll see someone sort of glaze over <laughs> there's got this little yawn coming in. I try not to take it personally. Have you ever had that experience? But coach-like skills apply in any situation. That's what I love about these skills. Professionally influencing, empowering others, clarifying a problem. We use coach-like skills to ask better questions and listen more deeply. You might want to use these skills in your personal life, maybe managing difficult conversations or navigating conflict in your personal life. Of course, we can use them at work to manage difficult conversations. Diffusing an argument, coach-like skills can be very helpful, but we have to manage ourselves that we don't get caught in the trigger train and on that slippery slope. So what I love about coaching is they apply in any situation. You don't need to be the content expert. So we coach across all industries. So I'm an expert in none of those. We are not experts in the industry or experts in human behaviour. So when you bring your expertise and we bring ours, amazing things can happen. So that's what I love about it. And the other thing is, the third thing I love about coaching skills is you get immediate feedback. You know if your coaching is landing or not or it's making a difference for people because they're either going to, the light behind their eyes is going to switch on and you're like, it's, you know, there's something going on here. They're getting something out of this. Or they're like, mm, yeah, okay. Or they will repeat something that they've already known before. I just need to do this. When I hear someone say that in a coaching session, I'm like, Ugh, put the brakes on. You knew that before you came here today. Something needs to shift. Let's try something else. So I love that about coach-like skills. You get immediate feedback. So what do you love about what you've tried with coaching before? I'd love to hear when you stepped in, what have you enjoyed about it? Was it scary and you did it anyway? And you had a satisfying experience, maybe something that you, a conversation you had helped somebody else transform that situation, maybe their mindset, maybe they shifted perspectives as one of our team loves to say, 
changing people's perspectives. Thank you, Shireen. I love that. I think about that sometimes. So I'd love to know, what have you tried in coaching? Pop it in the chat box. What have you loved? So I've shared with you my three things. They apply in any situation. You don't have to be the expert. You get immediate feedback. That's what I love about coaching. Love to hear what you do. So while you do that, how today will go, I'm going to talk to you about what coaching is and isn't in my perspective. I'm going to talk to you about some key mistakes. So when people um, come through our work, they go through our first body of work called leadership excellence for le levels of leadership excellence. And then they, and that last level, the level four is about creating leaders, which is about coaching, building coach-like skills. So when they start to develop their coach-like skills, I start to make some mistakes, which we all do, and so have I, and sometimes still do. So I'll talk to you about those common mistakes and how to avoid them. I'll talk to you about my five guideposts. That's what I want to share with you today, and I'll pop that up on the iPad as we go through my five guideposts for coaching, including one that not many people talk about that I learnt mm, maybe, maybe 12, 15 years ago that just changed everything for me as a coach. It was scary. It was awesome. And I was really well supported through that process. So I want to share that with you today because it's a, such an important ingredient for coaching. And I don't think I've talked about it even much with those people who have done our work before. Dun, dun, dun. So there's the character, you know, hang around. <laughs> so I'll share that with you shortly. I want some Q&A to invite some Q&A. So if you would like to ask me some questions we can deep dive, absolutely happy to do that. And then my intention for you today is to walk away with at least one powerful thing, one thing. So my mantra is, so what now what? What's going to be different that you invested this hour and we had this time together? So think about what's the one thing you really want to take away from today. All right, so what do we love about coaching? Yes, when they look back and, you, and they say it made a difference, you're like, oh, yes. I love going beyond the surface and finding the deeper truth. Amy, nice to see you. Welcome. Thank you for sharing. Holding space to allow the person to feel valued. Love that, Jazz. Thank you. When you know it makes a difference and after you coach someone, you remind yourself at the same time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had that experience yesterday, Jessica. I was coaching and, you know, we, integrity is really important. And so in our team, and I have to lead by example to practice the work all day, every day. Oh. Sometimes that's really hard to practice the work of self-awareness and brave chats, isn't it? And then yesterday I had a moment where I was coaching someone. I'm like, mm, note to self and put that back in place that you don't have to be an expert. Yeah, I love that. Can't wait to dive deeper on that with you, Elizabeth, as we go through our conversations. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. I love these comments and I'm sure you all love uh, reading each other's shares as well when they're executing a plan that they have defined, beautiful, when something clicks and they feel impact. I know, isn't that a beautiful moment? And you, and you just feel the chills, the goosebumps, asking questions of my kids instead of giving them answers. Love that, seeing what they create for themselves. And, you know, what I find sometimes that people who go through our work share that their kids say or their partners say, don't coach me, are you coaching me? Are you doing that stuff to me? But when we actually do it in a way that's authentic and genuine, so we're really listening deeply and we're asking great questions like you shared there, Alicia, then that's magic, isn't it? That's real magic. So I love that. Thank you so much. All right. So when people ask me about coaching, they will say things like, how do I know what question to ask? How do I know if I'm having the impact that I really want to have? What do, what, what do I do? This is a common one. What do I do if someone's not open to my coaching? Has that ever come to your mind? What do you do now? That's an important one. I recently was coaching a group and we've been working together with this group of leaders for maybe two to three years. So they're going through the next level program. And one of those coaches based in New Zealand, actually, really amazing person, great leader. And her and I are opposite profiles. So we use a profiling tool called DISC. So I've been using that intensely for the last 10 years. So we live and breathe that in our work. And I'm always profiling people, you know, just that's kind of automatic, as you probably do your thing that you're an expert in automatically. 
And so she, her and I are kind of opposite profiles. We've had this kind of every now and again, we've had this like, eh, and I'm like, I've got to stop and pause and go, okay, what's a better question? Because this isn't landing. Yeah. So I'm going to be listening for, is this serving? Is this adding value or not? And in this moment, it was just the last couple, last couple of weeks. And I said to her, are you open to coaching on that? And it was maybe three or four people in that small group coaching uh, as part of their, of their program. And she said, yeah, I'd be, I'm happy to be coached. I'm like, mm, warning bell, <laughs> because that is not a yes. Can you hear that? And she said, yeah, I'm happy to be coached. That is a no. That is someone not saying yes to that. And we need that space of someone saying yes. So, you know, I stopped and paused and asked her another question. Like, mm, I'm not sure. Let me just check in again. Are you open to coaching? Because what I really needed from her, if she was, to be accountable for her yes. That's one thing we'll talk about today is permission. We need to ensure that people being accountable for the yes or their no. And in the end, what she said, actually, you know what? No, I'm not. And I'm like, thank you so much, because if I had have just jumped in there, we would have had our moment again, and that would not have served her. So that was a beautiful moment for me um, when we trust ourselves. Yeah, and we'll talk about that today. At what point do I try to move people forward? <laughs> so often we go into a coach like what we think is a coaching conversation, maybe at work with our peers, if we're often coaching or our team, and we we think we're not going in with an agenda but actually we are so we're like yeah we know we, we need them to get there but we'll just we'll coach but actually we're just trying to push them forward and instead of um you know giving advice we might go have you tried this well that's not coaching that's still advice giving disguised as the question right so how do I know when to move people forward that's something that we um, need to be really clear on when we're being coach like is that we're walking beside people. We're not in front trying to drag them or not behind trying to push them, yeah? So, and how do I not, there's another question people ask me, how do I not put my stuff on other people? <laughs> That's a very good question because none of us are pure, are we? We might've been pure, I don't know, when we're born, some people's nature or nurture, who knows, right? But we're certainly not pure now after being on the planet for a few decades and experiencing life and absorbing you know, and developing conditioning values and belief systems and so on. That um, So none of us are pure. How do I know I'm not putting my stuff on someone else? And that's something that we practice every day because when we're running, like we're running a business, we're doing all sorts of other things other than coaching, and then we move into a coaching space. We need to really manage ourselves well, just like you. You're not always coaching. You're doing a lot of other things. So how are you coming to that coaching conversation? Yeah, how are you clearing yourself beforehand? All right, very cool. So those are some of the things. Any of those ring true for you? Any of those kind of questions that you might be asking yourself about coach-like skills? I'd love to know in the chat if any of those feel like they resonate for you or maybe you've got a different question because all of these questions are valid and, and it tells me where people are at in their development as a coach or being coach-like, and then we can support them to grow. So if you've got questions, resonating, amazing, plus, plus, plus. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. All right, so what is coaching? Coaching is, for, for us, in what we do and how we, uh, our expression of coaching is facilitating spaces, facilitating spaces in which people can reconnect and connect with their own state of empowerment. Like, that's beautiful, isn't it? We don't have to do anything to them. What we actually need to do is create bigger spaces energetically to give people more space to take their stuff off. Yeah. So I love the, the word facilitation. For me, that's like a dance, dance of listening and questions and tuning in. And so when we're creating and facilitating these spaces for people through our who we are, how, how we be, our presence, questions that we ask, who we're not, yeah, all the things we don't do as well, that creates these amazing spaces. So that's one of the things. To do that, we have to believe, we have to believe that people have the resources within them because if we believe that they don't, then we're going to advise, then we're going to try and fix, then we're going to try and save. As Michael Bungay Stanya talks about in his TED Talk, The Advice Monster, which I highly recommend and we share with people in our programs. So you can just Google that and find that it's very 
funny, entertaining, and also enlightening. We have to believe that people are resourceful and we have to be a stand for that because if we don't believe that, we will collapse into them and try and fix and save them. So we have to listen for the greatness in others, which is one of our distinctions. Yeah. So we have to facilitate spaces, believe people have the resources within them, and how we coach is equal measures, intentionality and accountability and compassion and curiosity. Yep. So we still hold an intention. We're still we're here to do business, right? We're here to achieve an outcome. We're not talking for the sake of it. This is not life coaching. We don't do life coaching. This is coaching in a business context, whatever you do in business, yeah, wherever you're at. And today I'm talking about being coach-like in your organisation or in your business and supporting others to grow and empower others, facilitating those spaces where people can find their own empowerment. So that's the context for today. So what coaching isn't is, what it isn't, telling, advising, preaching. You might say I'm preaching today. Dominating, controlling, submitting, bypassing or saving and I have done all of those in my uh, journey as a coach, thinking I was coaching, but no, I wasn't. So it's not telling, it's not advising. They're not wrong, by the way, telling and advising. All these things aren't wrong. Sometimes you'll need to tell, advise and preach even. <laughs> Dominate, mm, maybe not. Control, mm, maybe you do need to take control sometimes and move something forward if something's not, you know, there's not a shift coming. So that's okay. Sometimes there's a place for that, but that's not coaching. Submitting, bypassing, or saving, not coaching. So submitting meaning, okay, yep, no worries. Okay, yep, I agree, but not really agreeing. Or like the story I shared with you earlier, yep, I'm open to coaching. Well, no, you're not. You're not really, are you? So you know, let, where do we need to own our stuff, right? So that's what it's not. And as I said, I've done all of those things and sometimes still trip up and want to do those things. Um, and then self-regulation, self-management, you know. All right, let me have a look at some comments. Love that, Jazz. Yeah, team group coaching. Absolutely. How do you support the team at various stages of being heard? So great question. And I love that you've brought this specific question because it's one thing to coach one-on-one, -on -one, isn't it? And then it's another to coach large groups of people and bring them on a journey with you. That's, and we've coached in that, coached and facilitated in that space up to 100 people in a coaching environment at once. That's a lot of people at different stages in their, as you say, in their feeling heard or their, even their professional development, their maturity. That's a lot to dance with. Yeah, that's a moving, you know, that's an ocean of people in a coach like space. That's not a keynote, that's a coach like space. So it does take something, but any size group when you're coaching, that the deeper listening is so important and you've got to then speak to where different people are at by knowing their profiles, knowing their core needs, knowing where they might be at, what might be their triggers, where their emotional maturity might, might be, and you've got to speak to that the whole way through, yeah, and, you, and acknowledge that. One of the things that I think makes our coaching so effective and so transformative is that we're so real about being human. I'm always sharing my failures. I'm always sharing my trip-ups, my practices. And as a team, that's what we practice with each other. And I'm so proud of that. And that will always be what I stand for because that creates a space for all of us to be human and real. And then we can step into that space. So that team, your team there, Jazz, can step into that space with you and be real if you are being real. That's the access to connection. Because there's so much shame and embarrassment for us as human beings about who we think we should be and who we think we're not, not enough of. And all that gets pushed down. And then it just comes out in projection and reaction, guardedness, defensiveness. Yeah. And so if we can open that space to be real by leading by example, that invites people in and then you get you tune in. So whether it's one-on-one -on -one or a large group in a coach-like space, it's the same principles. But yes, it can. It takes practice. So if you've got a deeper question, then of course, I mean, we could talk about that particular one all day. But if you've got a specific deeper question, feel free to ask. Beautiful share, Wayne. Thank you. 
but it, trust is everything. And we never assume trust. Trust is either present or not in the moment. And while someone say, might say and sign an agreement to say, yes, you know, I'll give you permission to coach me or you're my manager. So uh, I guess you expect that you're able to coach me. It's the moment. Is trust present in the moment? And if it's not, we don't coach. We've got to, we've got to start, take a step back. Uh, the TED Talk is Michael Bungay Stanya. If you just Google Amy, um, the advice monster, you'll find it. Um, yeah, very good. All right, excellent. So thank you for your comments so far. If I've missed anything, please let me know. So coaching is a space of nuanced facilitation. For me, there's three things here. Intention versus agenda. So being committed, not attached. And an amazing woman, um, someone who's just finished one of our longer programs today, um, yesterday shared something that I put on my um, stories last night about um, the rule, I think it was the rules or the tips of detachment, which is really beautiful. Have a look at that. Um, you'll find me at, I think I am Karen Williams is my um, Instagram handle. But it's just a beautiful visual and attached to some music. It was gorgeous. So intention versus agenda. I can have an intention. I need to have an intention for this person's breakthrough, get to, to achieve their goal, to move forward where they want to go, but not an agenda. Not, not the way, it, it's not about where I think that person needs to go. It's where's their goal? What's the expectation of them of, from the business? Where do they need to be and want to be? And we hold true to that while we then dance in the middle of the space with, with them in that coaching conversation. So intention, not agenda, moving into the unknown versus the known. So when we're giving advice and telling people and doing all the talking, it's because we are comfortable in the known, being in the unknown. So one of our um, distinctions is transformational questions. And one of the pieces of that is asking questions we don't know the answer to, which is the most fun to play because then we're both discovering, aren't we? Well, we, it takes something to be in that space, doesn't it? When, we, when we're the expert and we're the manager and we expect it to teach people and, you know, they're coming to us for all that great advice, it's hard to let go of the knowing or feeling like we, we must know all the answers. So being willing to step into the unknown when you're being coach-like and then seeing the human versus reacting to the behaviour. So these are three things, three kind of, um, I guess, pillars of the space Intention versus agenda, stepping into the unknown versus the known, so surrendering to the unknown versus holding on to the known, and then seeing the human versus reacting to the behaviour. So separating the person from the behaviour, very, very important. Believe that the person is more important than the behaviour in the moment. So if you think about something that you might have done in the past, that maybe when you reflect on now you think you could have done it better, oh, I could have said that better or, do you, you know, I regret doing that because that really hurt that person or it hurt me or we all have those moments, yeah. And maybe in our less than brilliant moments, if we had have been judged by someone as, well, that's as good as we get, that would be quite hurtful because we know that we're more than that one moment in time in the behaviour or the thing that we said. And so vice versa, if you're treating someone as their behaviour, then you're limiting their opportunities, potential, and you're also limiting yourself as a coach. So knowing that they're more than their behaviour is really key. All right, how are we going so far? How are we going? I'd love to hear any questions so far, anything you'd like me to go deeper on. I'm very happy to do that. And I'm about to share with you something on the board. Let me put this up. Beautiful. Thank you, Jessica. So the questions that I uh, mentioned before, actually, I'm really curious to know which ones might have resonated. Just before I jump into my, um, my question, give me a moment. Oh, here it is. I jumped a page. All right. So common mistakes people make jumping a page in their agenda. Um, when they're doing the webinar. All right, so seven common mistakes. I'm going to put these up on the board. Seeing the, you know, the person pass the behaviour. Thank you, Amy. Let me throw these up. 
All right, you should see in a moment a black screen. I'm hoping that you can see that. I'm just trying to get my chat back up while I do that. All right, so these are the seven common mistakes I want to share with you that I that I have seen over time that leaders, managers, and people who want to influence make. There's my chat. Thank you. And see it. Thank you. All right, seven common mistakes. We don't understand the difference between advising and coaching. Now, you might think that you know the difference, and great if you do, but my experience is a lot of people think they're being coach-like and they're not. They're just kind of got, they're hiding that, not intentionally, not with bad intentions, but they're hiding that um, need to advise with questions so they're asking questions but the questions aren't questions that they don't know the answer to they're not questions to start with how or what they're not questions that are inspired by their listening which are the three things that make up transformational questions versus transactional questions so we need to be asking transformational questions versus transactional yeah and so when you're being coached like having to think about where you might be closing it down because you're asking transactional questions and where you can be opening it up more. So the way the access to that is through your listening. Come back to a state of presence and then really listening to what someone's saying and then have your trust that your question will be inspired through that. And that's one thing that I'll talk about when we get to the five, the five points. Hang on one second, I'm just going to have a sip of water. They try to get the words right. Mm, excuse me. They try to get the words right. So <laughs> when I'm when I'm working with a group or one on one, and we're talking about someone that they want to coach, so we often do role plays or practices so that they can get that sense in their body and in their mind of what that feels like to be in coach like space as opposed to anything else. And then I might I might do the role play first, so they'll be the person that they actually want to coach, and I'll be them. And so we'll go through that and that'll be great. And then we'll swap. Obviously, they'll get a practice at being themselves and I'll be the person they want to coach. And then they'll, they'll say, oh, I wish I could say it like you said it. And they'll try and write things down. I'm like, no, it's not about that. It's who you're being that brings out those words and those questions. So who you're being. So remember, B do have one of our core principles of the, and that's from the study of ontology, really focusing on who you're being as opposed to the doing of coaching. Coaching, being coach-like is all about who you're being, yeah? Let me know if this is resonating, if this is helpful. Number three, we try to know it all now and before we coach. And if you're looking to be more of a coach in your business, in your organisation, maybe start your own coaching business, try to know it all now, we think that we need to be that coach who's had so much experience who seems like it's really easy and we know we can do that. We know in that we believe in ourselves that we can do it. But then when we get into a coach-like situation, maybe it's clunkier than, than what we would like to be or feels a bit awkward. Mostly the people you're coaching aren't going to know. They're not comparing you to another coach. They're, they're feeling and thinking what's, what's important for them. And all that they care about is the, are you listening are you, are you valuing them in that moment? Are you present with them? That's everything. And then from there, your questions are a bonus. <laughs> yeah. And, and these coaching conversations don't have to take a long time. It's your state of presence that makes all the difference. So often people will say, well, I don't have time to coach. Well, have you got five minutes to do a quick conversation? Yep. You can do a coach-like conversation in that five minutes. It doesn't even have to take five minutes. Yeah. So it's about who you're being and whether you're trying to know it all. Number four, um, we don't, so they don't want to, they're scared they're going to what I call break someone. You know, what if I completely mess up 
that person. You're not going to do that. You, you're not going to do that. You've got to step in and have a go. Number five is they're scared to trust themselves. And so they'll stick with the advice. If you're scared to step into a being coach-like and surrendering to the moment and letting go and being curious, it's likely you'll just hold on to advice. And how will you know that? You'll If you're listening to your language, you'll hear yourself just pushing. It's a push. Advice can be a push energy. So you're just pushing in on them. Yeah. So a lot of the time I find people are scared to trust themselves. Last two, they go in thinking they need to prove themselves. It's not about you. <laughs> I did that when I first started coaching. You know, I've got to get this right. It's all about me, how good a coach I am. And, you know, if I'm a great coach, they'll get their thing. No, that's, well, it's not about me. It's not about all the stuff because I'm just then going in with a head full of stuff, aren't I? It's about taking all of that away. And that's the practice. And number seven, they don't, they don't have the self-awareness to know that they're bringing in their stuff. And that's one of our, we have a leader as coach model based on my experience as a coach over a couple of decades. And we teach that at our level four of our leadership excellence model. Um, and self-awareness is, you know, knowing that I'm bringing some stuff into this conversation and owning that. And we call that clearing. So what is it that I need to dump over here so then I can go and be here with this person and be really present with them? And that's at home, isn't it, with our relationships at home as well. So self-awareness is they don't, they don't know that they're bringing in their own stuff. Now, how do you know? How do you know? How do you know that you're bringing in your own stuff? Okay, I'll go back to that, Lynette. Won't be said. Can't see it. Someone says I can see it. Yes, can see it. Someone says, okay, cool. Yep, sorry. Um, bringing in their own stuff. Where was I going with that? Someone remind me. Anyway, I'll go back to number five. Let me go back to number five. Scared to trust themselves, Lynette. Scared to trust and have a go and maybe fail. You're not going to break the person. It, might, it just might be a great conversation, but they might not transform. They might not get anything that's different to what they've had before. That's okay. Try again next time, yeah? So trust yourself to go in and have a go. And then prove, uh, sometimes one of the mistakes is, we, you know, it's all about us. We prove ourselves. And the last one is we don't know that bringing our, in our own stuff. That's what I was saying is we've got to clear, clear ourselves. So we might go and say to our manager who's you know we're, we're agreeing with our manager we're going to go and have a coach-like conversation with this team member or this group of people this team what what is it that I need to clear and leave elsewhere so that I can go in and be present so that they're the mistakes I see people make all the time when trying to be coach-like in their in their work in their leadership management yeah so have a think about am I doing any of that am I making any of those mistakes if you are it's okay I've made all of them um, and that's about learning, isn't it? Learning and growing. So I'd be keen to hear if there's anyone in particular that you feel that you resonate with when you're about to go into a coach-like conversation or you're inside a coach-like conversation. Probably one of the other ones, even number eight, would be they get triggered in a coaching conversation and keep coaching. <laughs> um, don't do that. So they're inside a conversation, they've cleared themselves, they've gone in, they're present, and the person they're coaching or the group that they're coaching says something, and now as a coach we're off in our own head. Yep, that's the bit we've got to own. That when we were off on our trigger train, we've got to own that and bring ourselves back. And that might mean take a break. That might mean ask the group to talk amongst themselves for a moment. That might mean pause. Actually, I've got to own this. I've just realised I've been triggered this is what's going on for me. Let me come back to my centre um, and then go again or you know, finish up, off that conversation and come back another time. You're human. It's okay that that happens. That happens to me as well. And it's about presence and catching ourselves and owning it. And that's where we own um, being human. And there's a lot of conversation around the word fail. You know, It's not failure. I, I, I really am not aligned with that I think we've got to own the word fail and be okay that we fail 
Here's a goal. Did we succeed or fail? We failed. Okay, got it. What, what can we learn? What's next? But we make failure mean so much about uh, us, ourselves. It's like, we're, we're a failure. No, we just failed in that moment. That's okay. All right, we good? Give me some thumbs up. Give me some reflections. Let me know if this is helpful. And I'm about to now give you the ta-da bit. What's the bit now, Karen? What do I do? What's most important? What amazing, wonderful, thank you. So to round us off, so what we've covered is what is coaching, what isn't? What are the mistakes we make? How is coaching helpful? So we've covered those things. We've talked about some things that are important to you. The difference maybe in coaching one person to coaching a group of people. And then, you know, sometimes the questions that we have. And now, now what we're going to do is I'm going to give you five points. And I haven't written it up like this before. As I said, every, every webinar we bring something new, a new way to look, of, look, look at something. So hopefully this will be valuable for you. Yes, Jessica, love that. It takes courage, doesn't it? I had to do that a few times. And it's just like, that's the real test. It's so easy to keep going and pretend we're not triggered. It's For me, that's a real test of someone's emotional intelligence, you know, our courage, who are willing to be as a leader. To me, that's real leadership. And those moments are pure gold when any of us, when we're in a team meeting, let's say, and someone owns their stuff. How inspiring is that? Just because we know what it takes on the inside. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Two, four, and six. Love it. Thank you. All right. So here's what I want to give you as far as these kind of key things that click together around being coach-like and, and how you can be more coach-like. So one of them is purpose. So hang on, let me just move this. So we need to have like a high, what's the highest intention? What is it that you really are committed to in this conversation? Are you committed to them getting your perspective do you think they should think what you think that's what you've got to be real with this takes being real with ourselves and feeling into coaching is very much about feeling being present to what's going on inside of us as a feeling because then that's a clue for what I'm thinking so remember always a thought first and a feeling challenge is thinking 60 to 70 thousand thoughts a day they're hard to catch the thought so if we can tune into how we feel I feel frustrated I feel small, I feel withdrawn, I feel empowered, I feel joyful. If we can tap into that feeling through just a moment of presence. And if it's a feeling we don't want to feel that's not serving this moment, what's the thought? Then we can then we can identify the thought, then we can change the thought. So having a highest intention and a commitment, and that might be for this person's breakthrough. Who knows what that will be? You might not know, and hopefully you don't. So the, an intention going in, an intention for them to change behaviour because the behaviour is not working, an intention for them to um, achieve their goal and, and the deadline that they need to or to exceed it. So many things, but the intention must be there. This is an intentional conversation. It's not conversation for the sake of it. I'm very adamant about that in what makes effective coaching in a business context, yeah? All right, so then there's permission. Please ask me if there's anything you want me to go deeper on. Permission. So I touched on that a little bit earlier. And this is about, uh, this is about the foundation. Without permission, there is no coaching. Please remember that. So you've got to be listening for that, listening for trust. Yeah, listening for rapport in the moment, like Wayne was saying before, in the moment. And I've missed, yeah, a couple of times in the last, I don't know, five years or something, you know, I've missed that. And that's okay. But you'll soon, you'll soon find out when you've missed if trust is present or not and you just keep going because you'll feel the energy close down. 
Have you ever been facilitating a group session, whether that as a leader or someone who influences, whether it's a team session, and you feel people closing down, the energy shutting down? That's a clue to know, mm, where am I? Who am I being? Yeah. So permission is key. This is the foundation of everything. And permission meaning moment by moment as well. So are they coming with you? So you're as you're walking beside them, are they still there? It's almost like you're coaching them, they're taking one step forward, then you're meeting them. Yeah, like that. So almost beside, but just a little bit behind in your as a metaphor for your coach being coach-like. So that means that permission is there and you're moving forward because it's not going to look how you think it should look. Yeah, a lot of the time. And so you've got to be willing to be in the unknown presence. We know a lot about presence, don't we? So this is, but, but something I've been sharing recently that people are like, oh, okay, which I thought, you know, I had made an assumption that I was communicating that, but maybe I wasn't, which is presence is a state within. Yeah, a state within. It's, it's not a doing thing that you do out here with these people. It's a state within. You've got to cultivate that within first. Yeah. That's, and so moment by moment again is really important because then you can, you'll be listening for the clues. You'll be hearing patterns. Patterns are everything in coaching. And maybe that's, I don't have that on here, but maybe I should be adding that on here. Then the next one is partner. There's one more, as I said to you. Partner is like the dance, the dance of the listening and questions. Yeah, and that's an infinite space. There's no limitation then in that space, which is very, very exciting. That, that can scare us, but it also can thrill us. All right, so you guys getting this? Talk to me about what's helpful here. Questions to go deeper on any of those four, because there's one more I want to give you now. Where would I put patterns? Maybe patterns would go under here with partner. Because mm. when you're partnering, you're listening. And listening in the listening, you'll hear the patterns. So one of the things around this is also the language that people use. If you're tuning into language, words, patterns of words, patterns of phrases, it'll give you a clue of what's happening in what I call their unconscious, because what drives behavior, habit of thought drives behavior, habit of thought is unconscious patterns, right? Then, but it comes out in our language. And if you're hearing someone repeat something, that's a clue to help you know how to coach them. So, oh, hang on, you've said that three times now in this conversation. Talk to me about what that's about. You don't have to know what that's about. All you need to do is be listening and then not being curious about that. And because they won't know that they've said that three times, because they're in it. It's like the what I call the fish in the bowl of water. And someone comes along and says, hey, fish, how's the water? And the fish says, what water? Because it's all the fish knows. So as human beings, we're the same. It's all we know. We're in our life. Someone on the outside really listening deeply can hear patterns that we can't hear. You with me? All right. Very good. Is this helpful? Talk to me. So the last one I want to give you, before I give you the last one, I want to hear what's connecting for you out of purpose presence, permission, and partner. What's one you're going to practice more of or what one would you like to know more of? So let's talk about that and then I'm going to give you the last piece. Lisa Coyle, nice to see you. Super helpful, excellent. Partner, thank you. <laughs> Love your views. Love looking at your views as well, Lisa. Great partner. Thank you, Lynette. Permission. I found it difficult at times to find that distinction between manager and coach for sure. Oh my goodness. When you're running a busy practice, a team, and there's things to do and manage and have accountability around. Absolutely. It's very difficult to step into that coach. Like come, keep coming back to yourself, Amy, you've got what you need inside you. You've got your listening. Come back to the work that you've done. Yeah, there's wisdom in that. And then whole presence that, that the coach like will be right there for you. Very good. Permission, yeah, being part of the foundation. Yes, can't decide between partner and permission. <laughs> Take both, Jazz. Presence and permission, more awareness here. You can practice that today, Elizabeth. Um, love it. You're an amazing woman. And Miwu, purpose and permission. 
Where do I? Oh, yes, great. Jazz. <laughs> love it. Thank you so much, you guys. You allow me this space to play. I love it so much. We create it together, don't we? All right, very good. Thank you. So here's the last piece I want to give you that not many people talk about, and even though I don't talk about a lot, and I'm going to be talking about more about, more about, more about, <laughs> because this was an important part for me in my coaching journey. Now, I know I am a coach. You may not want to be a coach. You want to be coach-like. So I'm talking to that piece, right? You're not a coach all day, every day. You're many, many things. But this piece really was powerful for me in about 2011, 2000, somewhere between 2007 and 2011, when I was working in a space in a certain methodology and I had to, uh, my, my role was to be a neutral facilitator um, through courageous and brave conversations in the justice system. And we had a framework, like, you know, lists of questions. This is how, this is how the conference goes, this is how the session goes. This is some questions, example questions you can ask, just like you would be using in, you know, in a coach-like conversation, you could use the GROW model or our model, whatever, um, their coaching models. And But what I had to practice, which I was terrified to do, was asking questions that I didn't want to ask. And that, for me, is about risk. You've got to be willing to ask the hard question the one that you know you need to ask and really want to ask and you're terrified to, to the point that you're nervous and physically resisting it. But when I had practice in that and I had support in that, that my manager, I had the, one of the most incredible managers of my career at that time, and she taught me a deep trust in myself to ask the question that could go either way. And that environment was, we we're talking about crimes that had been committed. So there were significant conversations. The victims were there, the perpetrator, the, the young person who'd committed the crime was there, the, the police officer was there who had referred this young person to the, to the conversation, to the conference. Family were there. <laughs> and I'm here I am wanting to ask this really hard question. And I'm like, mm -hmm. so, but, but I knew I had to ask it. And what I learned was to trust myself more by asking it. And, and then this is the key, asking it, but then seeing and experiencing what happened because I asked that question, like I'm sure you all have at a time in your life, asked a difficult question. And when, it's, when it goes well, the magic, what can open up, the transformation, the new awareness. And when you ask that tough question or scary, risky question, from a, a good good intention, intention of commitment versus attachment, and in, an intention of you know having purpose, being present, being in partner. When you do it from that place, it's never going to go badly. It might not make a difference that much. It might because you've maybe asked it in a way that hasn't come across as so powerful because you've been scared. But it's not when you have that foundation and you've got the permission, you can go there. You've got to be listening for the permission, listening listening for the trust. But you've got to take that risk. And as you do that, that will make you, if, if nothing else, that will make you a better coach. Does this make sense to you? That's the piece that I think is missing for a lot of people who want to be coach-like because it's terrifying because it's just you, just you in there <laughs> holding the space. And you, and you want to be taking people with you, not having them disengage. And, and what I learned was, and this is what I now practice all the time and what I feel that we are great at in our brand is because we practice that trust so much and that presence that if it doesn't land well, we can trust ourselves to clean it up. So we're willing to take the risk for their transformation, for to serve them. And if for some reason it doesn't go well, it doesn't land, we're skilled enough, we're practiced enough, we can clean it up and restore trust. That's a big deal. And that is the source of people's transformation. That's where we facilitate those spaces where people just, you know, popping everywhere. And that to me is what we, what this is all about. So that's the piece I would encourage you to start to practice more because I know that you have questions inside of you that you're not asking. 
And it's not about the question. It's about, let me create the foundation. Let me make sure that they're open, that I'm building trust, that I'm present, that I've done my work on me. I'm not in advice. I'm in coach-like. And now I'm going to step in and ask this question. And sometimes if you've experienced coaching with me and with us, I'll say, look, this is a hard question. I'm really, I'm going both ways as to whether I should ask it, but I'm going to ask it. And that just sort of sets the, the scene. People go, okay, <laughs> what is she going to ask? But I'm here, I'm with her, I'm going to go there. Right. And so that's when we that's when we allow that amazing space to open up. And that's the that's the juice. That's the that's the goosebump moment. All right. Did you get it? I hope you got that. Talk to me about risk. Are you going to take some risk in your um, practicing of being coach like? So now I'm going to. Let me just see if there's anything else I wanted to share with you. Now I'm going to give you a moment to share with me. So you might need some reflection, you might put on some music and have a look back through your notes and identify what's one thing that's going to be different from this conversation today. What's one thing you're taking away you're going to practice and then I'd love you to share it in the chat. So I'm going to pop on some music. What song will I play? You guys hear that? So what are you taking away? What are you going to practice? Beautiful, Jessica. Thank you. Can't hear the music. You can just see me dancing. <laughs> yes, very good. Thank you for that right. Yes, Jade, amazing. We don't have to know it all to coach. We just need to be curious, do the work on ourselves and show up. Beautiful. Good commission and risk, beautiful. Can you hear it now, Nat? Right. Remember, so what now? What? What's going to be different now that you and I invested this time together? Amy says, not having to know it all before I create the space of coaching, taking the risk of stepping into the unknown and getting answers I may not know or like. Brilliant. Yes, that's right. We might not like it when we're managing someone and being coached. Like we might not like what they're going to say, but isn't that great information? It's valuable information when someone's got negative feedback for us or they're disempowered. That's very valuable information. We want to know that stuff. Still can't. Okay, seeing the human behind the behavior and beha believing people have the resources within them, beautiful. Owning fail, fail, failures, <laughs> which in turn allows others to own theirs. It's, it's so much fun, Lainey, thank you so much. Well, you are all my heroes. Thank you so much for investing in yourselves this morning. I've loved your sharing. I hope and trust that this has been helpful for you such that you'll take away a gold nugget and practice implementing that immediately. Keep asking questions. Our next webinar masterclass will be Friday the 16th of June. Pop that in your diary. We're not then having one for a couple of months. So June will be one to be there um, so that then we won't be back until later in the year. Fantastic. Love being here with you. Have a wonderful, wonderful Friday. Go be coach-like. Be amazing. I'll see you soon.